what is up guys a hey, quick video here um, just gonna do this very uh, from my phone so I hope this turns out okay the Daikin unit that I was working on earlier I made a couple live streams while I was checking it out waiting to collect some data and at first I, you know that thing looked like it was probably low on refrigerant and I took some logs and then I uh, ran the second time I actually heated up the space to 80 degrees using the uh, duct heaters, the, the uh, reheaters, and then ran it, let it run full tilt. And I'm like, wow, that sucker's kicking ass. It's not low on refrigerant. Eventually, um, the pressures were normal. It's weird. Each time they started kind of crappy, especially the first time. So I want to show you uh, the Excel uh, files that it makes from the Testo smart probes. So... Basically, I just chopped these down a little bit. So uh, it starts right there. Here's 804 this morning. And I misread that uh, microprocessor when it of it saying that it uh, had another active alarm at 803. I guess the plus and minus symbols in that uh, microprocessor, the minus means it, it cleared an alarm, which usually means you manually cleared it, which I did. And the plus means it came on. So kind of weird when I was looking in that thing. I should have had a photo ready of it. Um, I, you know, uh, the alarm actually uh, was put in like months ago, but this, they're still not uh, using these operating rooms. And somebody just happened to go in there the other day and noticed that it was not cold like it should be in that room. So that's what generated this service call. Bunch of things kind of threw me off on it. So, um, so basically, uh, I cleared the alarm and ran it. And here's the thing: is like so at 8:04 it kicks on. And I'm equalized, right? 190 PSI of R410. It goes and immediately just shoots down within uh, to 12 PSI on the suction. Um, I say immediately, but you see it started at 23 seconds. And so 30 seconds later, at 54 seconds, you know, after, you know, 30 seconds, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be still going down on suction, I would think. So that come like, whoa, this truck is probably low on charge. Look at that. It was like, it was uh, 0.4 uh, degrees of subcooling, right? Because at the top, there's a subcooling superheat. Superheat was 102, 208 over 12 point, uh, 208 discharge, 12.7 suction. I'm like, dude, this unit is probably low on charge. So I'm just kind of looking around, wondering when it's leaking, you know? And then it slowly starts coming up. And then I'm like, wait a minute, look at that, all that subcooling. And the unit's kind of ramped up. It's got a little bit of head pressure now. I'm like, wow, it's looking pretty normal. There we got, you know, um, more than 10 degrees of subcooling. Silverheat's already down to 30 something. Suction's still kind of low. Uh, evaporator meat, uh, is in the 20s still there for 410. And then eventually it kind of corrects. I did turn off this uh, log before it got you know, too far. Plus that it, it was, it was only 70 in there and it cools to 66. So it kind of, um, basically, uh, the VR, it's a VRF unit. These Daikin rebels is variable refrigerant flow. So it was already backing off the, the VFD for the compressor. So then I, I did a second one and I heated that space up to 80 degrees with the duct heater and started it up. Same thing, man. It's so it's eight forty and fifty seconds equalized, and then boom, it's like uh, dropping down to a pretty low pressure, but not down to twelve, not down to thirty-seven right here. Uh, so fifteen seconds later, and then it starts going back up. You know, and there's like no subcooling, but then once everything starts balancing out, there's adequate subcooling, and the superheat corrects. So uh, when I say that started at 841, basically, and it runs and runs and runs, and it's ramping up and everything too. And the, evidently the electronic expansion valve's just not fast to open. I thought it was sticking by the time I checked this thing out. And then here we are, it's just kicking ass mode, you know, 289, 290, you know, height discharge, 120 something suction, uh, it's about seven degrees sup, uh, subcool, eleven point seven superheat, uh, suction temperature, uh, uh, forty one, and coming back actually fifty three. It was like in kick ass mode by this point. I'm like, what the heck? 
So I'm also just showing you guys the Testo Smart Probes, what you got. So I ran this unit a long time. So would that go from, I started it at 41 minutes, 841, and it ran all the way. There's 901. I, mean, I ran that thing quite a while, but I ran that room real warm. I got it up to 80 something and it's set point is 66. So boom. So it ran fine, pretty much. <laughs> now at one point, let me back this up a little bit. You notice that there's some extra readings popping in here, right here. At one point with me sitting on my tool bucket, somehow it wiggled and turned on the, the meter that was in there, which is another smart probe. And it's the smart probe that does the temperature and wet bulb and everything. So you got uh, device number 58, you know, so it's a uh, temperature, relative humidity, wet bulb, and then that, that other TV or whatever reading it gets. So, so there's one more over here to click on it there it goes oops i clicked it twice or something so uh it's the other file dang come on get away so okay so this is the uh the third time i check a reading so check this out so there's one thing i like to do um see when i'm on that stupid ipad for work you can't you don't have the full excel features one thing I like to do is freeze the top row. So I do that, um, view, freeze top row. Then when you scroll, you know, this top row stays there. So it's telling me what everything is. Uh, low pressure, high pressure, calculated evaporator based on that pressure, calculated, uh, you know, the um, condenser one or whatever, the uh, actual two temperature probes that are clamped on and then the calculated superheat and subcooling from those readings. And then over here, I'm gonna turn on my meter. So, but I wanna delete a bunch of rows that I'm not using until it starts. Right about here, hold on, I need to hit shift. And then I'm gonna hit control minus, boom. Just deleted a bunch of crap it didn't need. All right, so uh, right here, the unit kicks on. 926 and it does it's the section it drops down but it does it quicker this time it seems like it was working better each time it kind of had me going for a second and then it was it, it uh, started balancing out quicker and a couple just a few minutes into it you know i getting up to normal pressures and over here by the way i'm get i just threw this uh thermometer inside the uh duct inside the blower and look at that, it's 50 degrees i mean it's a, it's in kick-ass mode so, you know, 293 over 131, uh, 15 degrees of subcooling at that point. I know the subcooling goes up when you let your high side ramp up a little bit. And then uh, hardly any superheat. The unit is was not low on charge. The expansion valve eventually opened enough. So I called uh, the actual guy that does the commissioning and the startups and stuff, the official, you know, for the this stuff, for the local vendor. He also teaches, like, the VRF class and stuff. And so to my surprise, when I told him, I said, you know, have you ever seen like an electronic expansion wall just get stuck to where it takes a while to really start opening like a minute or two, three minutes into the cycle? And uh, he actually told me that the this performance I'm, I saw, normal. He says it's VRF, basically a package VRF unit, and it's just that's kind of regular to see that he says that's even when i saw it go down to 12 psi in the suction before climbing over the next minute or two they'll do that it's don't expect normal stuff you know it is a vrf got the variable compressor this compressor is a rotary some guy trying to see my ports on the wrong spot by the way that's not that's right on the discharge of the compressor that right there is right on suction suction's on top on that compressor by the way that is a rotary, and it is variable speed entirely. Uh, blower's variable speed, expansion valve's electric. This isn't a Goodman we're working on, folks. So anyway, <laughs> guy might have been kidding with me in the comments, I hope. But anyway, when he told me, shaking his head that I had the gauges on the wrong port. It was on my other video. But anyway, uh, so I guess uh, we got talking. I'm almost there. It's supposed to be a quick video. And uh, he says he's seen that fault I got come up from dirty input power or maybe from someone having a generator testing i'm like oh i bet they do have a generator so i talked to the guy the site guy he wasn't there today and he's like yeah well, they test it every month stuff like that then i'm thinking there was another job what were those units i call i call my 
supervisor at the shop. It's a picture of this unit that I've had to go to after they wrote, found out before. They had to diagnose this unit last year. This is another site. Guess what it is? It's a dike and rubble. Yeah, so uh, I'm trying to get, uh, I know I have more pictures of it. There we go. There we go. Dike and rubble unit. These are pretty much new, hot off the shelf. And uh, another medical place. Look, it's similar, except for I think that some of these had two compressors, but look, look it's pretty much, it's a gas. So it has gas for heating, reheat. Same thing, variable compressor. It's a bigger unit, obviously. Same, Microtech 3. Yep, Microtech 3. Uh, interface, your uh, introducer there and there. Go into that. All that I saw was good on the other one. This place here, they had already diagnosed it last year. Uh, as have faults from what generator testing when the power goes off and on real quick from the transfer switch it wigs these things out and it throws like random faults like a like what I was getting pressure uh, transducer or whatever signal you know the PTS fault goes active locks out the unit so for a while we were actually showing up for them to do their generator test and then I'd shut down the unit because I did this a few times for them. Shut it down and then rebooted it after they finished the generator test to make sure it had a clean boot and no faults. Make sure there's no faults in those uh, microtechs and reset it just to have a clean boot. And then now the, I think the on-site maintenance for this medical facility is doing that themselves. That's their fix. They just know when they do the generator test and they're going to be resetting it. So, yeah. hey, what's up? Finally got a guy chiming in just when I'm getting ready to finish the video. Hey, what's up, guy? So basically, those Daikin units I was showing earlier, um, <laughs> the dog's trying to get in. Um, there wasn't anything on the refrigerant. The expression valve behavior, new to me, but that's normal to dip down <laughs> into the teens and then climb up slowly over a few minutes for it. Uh, and everything catches up and it's normal. Normal, normal. Uh, the issue is probably the same as this other facility with the same units. This is a couple years ago when I was there last. Um, it's from dirty power or just power being turned off and on real quick. So generator testing, probably what did it. So <laughs> anything, learn something. I hardly ever call tech support for anything. I try. I usually just figure stuff out, but um, I'm glad I called them today. This is a new breed of animal. <laughs> and I would have thought it was this totally bogus for this thing to be starving the refrigerant. Um, you know, going back to. The first Excel file here. Just before I cut the video, everybody that chimed in now. I mean, I mean, you'd never expect a unit to drop down to 12 psi 30 seconds after it starts on an R410, and then take a couple minutes. So that's it. Uh, 804, 50. So 805 basically taking several minutes. 805 until uh, about 808, 810 before it's really getting good. The pressures. Almost five minutes that first cycle took to get the expansion valve and every the readings where they should be. I guess it's just the the, the controller on that. Yeah, yeah, that is low, huh, Jesse? That's low, but the guy that that works the that starts them up and does commissioning told me that's he sees that. Don't even worry about it. So variable speed compressor, electronic expansion valve, microcontroller, all that stuff. You know, I guess you know it's just not perfect and fast. So anyway. Thought I'd just share that since I made those three video clips earlier, and this is just a pretty much the final solution with that unit. It is not what you'd originally think. There's not a Goodman sticker behind it. <laughs> not on that unit, dude. Oh, you know, uh, come on, man. Goodman, this Goodman wouldn't know what all this stuff was in their engineers' wettest dreams. <laughs> They'd have no clue what they're looking at. <laughs> no clue. I mean, look at this stuff. This is way above them. I mean, it's probably the Goodman lover that chimed in earlier, told me the gauges were on the wrong port. But no, that's the suction. That dome right there, that's suction pressure. It's hot gas down bottom because this is a rotary vane compressor. That's your discharge coming out right here. Does this loop de loop, comes up. Um, right there's my port. I had my gauge on on the other one. It goes around, goes down into the oil separator. 
and the uh, oil, then the di- or discharge continues out, goes over and drops into the reverse valve. If it has one, this was a gas feed. Uh, right down here at the bottom is your little port, goes up through a strainer, it looks like, goes up to a quarter inch, then it goes through a couple little turns of capillary tube. I mean, it's small. And then it goes back in the quarter inch and then goes right into the suction. And that's just a basically a restrictor and it's slowly sucking oil off the bottom of the oil separator to get it back to the compressor. Pretty simplistic. There's probably no float or nothing in there. It's just, um, I know there probably isn't because when they have floats, they just keep it quarter inch or whatever. So yeah, pretty interesting. Um, all sorts of other valves, pressure transducers, electronic circuit breakers, all that stuff in these units. This picture is taken, uh, uh, 2017 yeah so almost two years ago I was there on that unit so I forgot all about that that uh, we had uh, that the, this this place but I wasn't the one that troubleshooted this I came, I came to a different company and uh, somebody they had already figured that out but then they were scheduling over there to reset them after they did the generator test so <laughs> after I realized what was going on with my place and I talked to the guy in my shop he's like oh it's great that would just made us start laughing. I'm like, what kind of units were over at that Heart Institute type place? He's like, frickin' Dyke and Rebel units. <laughs> anyway, all right, my video's going on forever, guys. It's Friday. You guys have a good weekend. 